welcome to the great big old state of Texas. Bonda Putt here. How y'all doing? Today I'm doing a couple of things. I'm revealing from my last video some of my resin pieces and I'm prepping and doing the first coat of paint on a 20 by 24 inch gallery wrap canvas. So I'm going to spin you around and we'll get started. My last video I was showing a two part on resin, how to pour it. Um, let me grab the other one that's partway done so I can show you if you haven't watched the video. Okay, learning to pour resin, I found out the hard way by making these coasters, which on this side is really pretty. It's just sand and sea. Okay, can you see that one? Okay, and you can see my hand through it because it's a little bit, see, it's see-through. And the same with this one, sand and sea, waves. But on the other side, what I was trying to do was put seashells, the sand, colored paint, and turtles that I had made out of a mold on the beach. Well. Like I said, I learned the hard way, and let me adjust my camera a little more. And um, if you don't do it in layers, everything goes together. So I'll show you what happened. Um, my turtles got buried, and so did most of my seashells. So I don't know if you can see that, but... Um, so the turtle was supposed to be sitting on top of the sand next to the seashells and everything just kind of floated around together because it was all poured at once. And this is how the other one turned out. It was not quite as bad, but the turtle still is not like I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be just sitting on top of the sand with the shells and the beach and the waves coming up to them. So I learned from that that you need to pour in layers. So this is a first layer of a sand, which that's real Texas sand, for the beach, which I mixed up actually in the resin until it was thick and then put the sand down. Um, and then you can stick the shells and the starfish or whatever you want to put on either the sand or the glitter. You can also do it with chunky glitter and glitter, but just make sure it's fairly dry. Just enough resin to cover it if you're using glitter. Just to coat it, not even to cover it, just to coat it. And then you can put your other stuff on and you leave it set overnight, okay? So it's all set up. Then you can pour your second layer, which I did in these. And you can see the water and the sand in the back, okay? getting a reflection. I don't know why. And um, let me go down a little bit more. I got my water too dark. So this is what it looks like. The water's a little dark. So it made it made everything look blue. Why? What reflection am I getting? Oh, I'm getting the reflection off of my, my um, resined photo back there. Oh my goodness, okay. Anyway, so if you do it in two parts, then everything will stay in place like that. So I did that one and I did these square ones at the same time. Oh, I gotta not get that painting in there. How do I do that? So you can see everything stayed in place, okay? Just don't get your water too blue like I did if you're just doing it with the water. You can also do them with the down further with the sand and then do your blue water just up to the sand and do your wave in it and then a wave up here and then let that dry overnight and then put the clear coat over the top of it to finish it all off. So that's how you do that. I just want to show you a couple of ones that I did do in layers also that came out really cool. This is my um, steampunk coasters and that's the steampunk side and this is the back which is the floor the flower side oh, 
there's that reflection again. Okay, there, hopefully you can see that good enough. Maybe if I move over here. But anyway, so there's the flower and there's the steampunk side. Okay, and so I have two of those that match. So only a set of two. So those are on my Vonda Puck Creations Facebook page. And then I also did this, which I absolutely love, which is dried flowers just in a skinny flat sheet mold. And I did this in layers. I did just half full and then I put the flowers on and then I let it dry overnight and then I poured another the rest of the way full and did the alcohol inks in the back without any white because I wanted it to be kind of so you could see through it in the sunshine because this is going to go in my kitchen window. So you can see through it. See, you can see through it and you can see the red and the blue in there. But with the sun shining through it, it'll be really pretty. I wanted it to kind of look like stained glass with the flowers in it. So that was a lot of fun. And then I did this little trinket box that has shells in it. It's clear with the shells in it. There, now you can see it. And then the lid also has shells, but it also has some mica powder bling on it from uh, Mica Island. Island Micas and more um, from Samantha's from Key West resin. Her that's her business. So their micas are marvelous. So what another little trick I do when I'm pouring resin, I always have a little, um, just a little mold of something laying around. So if I have anything left over at all, I do this. These are little flowers. It's just a tiny, tiny little flower. It's okay. There's my pinky finger. That's how big it is. Okay. And this is another one. And look how teeny that is. It's tiny, tiny. So I just put my little extra stuff. Like this one had some, I had some gold glitter already in the, the mold. So this is how this little gold, oops, I dropped it. Gold flower. I can't hold of it. It's so tiny. Gold flower turned out. It's a gold rose. Okay, so just keep some little molds around and um, you can do all kinds of fun little things that you can use in other resin pours. So that's what I keep in my little trinket box here. There's another little tiny rose, a darker purplish colored one. And let's see, here's a light blue one. So I just use whatever I, I scrape my, my uh, containers out really, really good and just drip the drippings into the flower or whatever mold you have. Next up I have, um, my next mold is butterflies and something else that I have. And here's a clear rose that you could put like in with some you know, on top of um, like a tray or something. And little teeny tiny roses. Tiny, tiny, tiny. And tiny, tiny little flowers. But anyway, so if you keep those next to your, um, when you pour it, next to you when you're pouring, you can make lots of cool little things. The other things I poured the other day were these floating roses. Now the roses my granddaughter brought me from some roses that she dried. And look at that, how it's just floating in there. Can you see it? They're beautiful. That's a heart shaped one. And then I also have this one. This one got a lot of bubbles in it, but that's okay. They still look really cool because this was a pretty deep mold. And this was a redo one that I did. So you can see that other layer of bubbles in there underneath it. That's from the original one I did because I didn't know that when you do flowers, they float. So I had to put something over the top to hold the, the rose in. 
And then I had to go back and um, I reset it in another mold that was bigger <laughs> after I finally got the flower down and um, report it so that you can't see the flower sticking out anywhere. <laughs> So just a few little tips I've learned and something for you to think about if you're going to get into resin, which I'm loving, by the way. And so I'm going to move that stuff all over. And here is my canvas. It is a Artist Loft Gallery wrapped 20 by 14. Okay, and we're just going to open that up. I'm going to bring you down so you can see what I'm going to be doing. There we go. Just get my scissors and I'm going to cut this so I can get it out. I do have pillow pads on my desk. You can see this has a really nice wood frame. These canvases are stretched really tight take that paper off and lay it down. Fold that so it'll fit in the garbage. Okay, now I'm just going to show you how I tape them in case somebody has never taped the back of a painting. Now I don't like to um, just tape the wood. I tape it all the way to the edge so the whole back is clear and I always fold my tape over so I can find it so I gotta trim that little piece off and I just start at a corner I get that tape cornered up there really good right to the end. and then I just get it lined up on this end and sometimes you have to lift it up and pull it in a little bit in the center because it likes to go out over the edge a lot sometimes then I just take my scissors, if you can see, I'll move you over a little bit, and I cut that right along the edge. I turn my canvas around, I rub that side down really good so it sticks, then I put this piece back on here on this corner. Continue to do that all the way around twice. So that I not only cover the canvas, but the wood at the same time. And if you cut it too short, that's one thing nice about overlapping, is you can overlap that corner and make it correct. to get some different push pins. All my push pins are about worn out, but I will put some in this today. I need to get some that I can hammer in. These are kind of hard for my hands to do. I always fold the end of my tape over so that I can find it really easily. Just a tiny bit. Back in a spot, put my scissors back up on my magnetic board and rub this down really good all the way around, especially around the outside edge so paint can't get under it. And oops, almost forgot to see, almost forgot to put my, my pegs in. Okay, this is what I'm using right now. It's just like a, a question mark push pin. So I find where the seam is at and I just try to put it in the where the boards are put together and it's not too hard to put in. I 
have some that are cleaner than others with it. which is my little level. There's a bubble to see if it's level. And it is, if you can see that. Level that way and level that way. And voila, just like that. I have um, Artist Loft, just regular blue. I have Liquitex, bright aqua green. And I have Unicorn Spit Gel Stain White. Okay, those are going to be my colors for what I'm starting with today. And let me grab my paintbrush. I forgot that. So today I'm going to start in the center. And I want this dark blue in the center. And then I'm going to want this green around that. I want a little bit of white around the outside of that. Ooh, that bottle's kind of hard to squeeze. Okay. my gloves on because I know I'm going to make a mess. Okay, can you see all that okay? Whoops. There. I'll pull it back a little bit so you can see it better. So I hope everybody's good out there. Here in Texas, we're having a lot of COVID cases right now, which is really scary. I'm waiting for a phone call from my son. So if um, I answer my phone while we're on here, you'll have to excuse me because he is waiting for his COVID test to come back. He's been in quarantine for about 14, 13 days today, just waiting for it to come back. So, um, it's supposed to be here. Well, it's here. It's on his phone, but he, um, didn't have his computer up and running, so he couldn't open it on his phone. He has to open it on his computer. So, I'm just going to simply do this in a circle. Isn't that a lovely blue? And I'm just going to keep going around in a circle with it until I get into the green. And some of you are probably going, mm-hmm, here comes another ocean theme. Well, not exactly an ocean. Okay, I'm going to get that white, pick that white up. So we get it all the way around the outside. Then I'm going to go back to the center. I'm going to grab some more of that blue. And I'm just going to go like this all the way around. And get these corners, do the corners. And this paint that I have piled on my brush now and the edges. I'm also going to, whoops, good thing I got painting shirt on, go around it again just from the green. Go around and around again. 
just to get that green mixed into where I want it here. Okay, now I'm going to just go ahead and paint my sides with what I have on my brush. going to go around that blue again now that that's set up a little bit. And paint this side. Or finish this side, I should say. Get my corners good. Okay, I'm going to turn my painting around so I can reach the other two sides. Ah, oh, that's a big painting. Just got it all over my shirt. Oh well. <laughs> that's what happens. That's why I have a painting shirt on. And I'm just getting the paint out of the brush onto the sides to cover it. Just one coat because there is going to be some other paint running down when I get ready to finish this. So I'm just running this brush slowly up the edge. I'll move you over so you can see like this to get some of the paint out of it onto the side. And then just simply take it like that and finish painting the side with it. There, now my sides are all painted. My corners are all done. And now I'm going to move you back over this way and I'm going to um, try to make this blue more of a circle now. Rather than a, whatever it is, <laughs> whatever it was. So I'm going to try to make the circle, this more of a circle than, than a, what is the other word I'm looking for? Come on people, my brain's not working. Oval. I don't want it to be an oval so much as a circle. So even though it's to the sides now, or the edges, that's okay. I'm just going to complete the circle, keep going around with my brush, even over the corners. There. Now, see how it's just kind of all fuzzed together? That's the way I want it. I've got a line in that purple that I don't, or in that blue that I don't really want there, but it's going to stay there anyway because, well, no, it's not. I'm just going to go around it one more time. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to put, wipe my brush off on my paper towel here. I'm going to put one little dot of white unicorn spit in the middle. And I'm going to use my finger and I'm just going to go around right in the center with it. Like that. Use a clean finger, go around the dark blue. I like using my hands sometimes better than now. I'm going to put my finger down because it's got white on it. And I'm just going to continue doing this just to blend more of my paint around. And I kind of want the lines to make it look like it's going down in a, a circle, like in a hole, kind of, I guess, is what I'm wanting it to do, to look like. So I don't know if that does or not to the camera, but let me turn my other light on and wipe my hands off. And I'm going to see what it looks like. Okay, 
There, there's some more light. towel to dry my hand off on. Okay. Now I'm just going to scoot this back a bit and I'm going to bring you up a little more there so you can see right here because I'm going to mix some other colors Okay, so I have Artist Loft Light Blue, I have Artist Loft Aqua Green, which you can tell is a different green than, well, it's, now that this is all mixed, it's a little different than the Liquitex, which is what I have on there now, so that's a little bit different green. I have Liquitex Basics, and this is... Uh, Thalocene green, Thalocene green, my favorite color, and I have Artist Loft Light Magenta, okay? So of those four colors, I have my mixing medium, which is Elmer's Glue All, 70% glue and 30% water. Okay, and I will bring it, I'll show you what I'm going to use. I can reach it. This, you guys know what this is, right? Air gun? Yeah, I think it's called an air gun. I need to go turn it on. It's not an air gun, it's a, oh, I've got a little thing of plastic glued paint, or glued paint, I can't talk, over the condenser because I don't want paint to get on it. So I'm going to turn that on, let the pressure come up. So you know, there is not any, um, there's not any silicone in any of this because I don't really want cells unless it makes its own cells. So I am going to do this part. I'm going to start over here in this corner. I'm going to, whoops, you can't see over there. Let me move you over a little more. Okay, I'm going to pour some of this green around like that in each corner, only in a circular motion. Okay, I'm going to bring you over this way and see if I can get the whole thing in the frame here for you. backwards anymore. Now, now you can pretty much see all the corners here. And I'm going to scoot my chair over a little bit. Actually, I don't have to do that. I'll just move the camera this way. Because my chair is right in the middle of the table. And I can move all my other stuff. See how easy it is. And voila, 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 voila. And boom, voila. There. Mostly you can see I'll change sides with that. And camera has got to go back just a little bit more because I can't work quite that close to it. Let me see if I can do this. Go down and back a little bit like that. Let's see how that works. Oh, that's going to be better. That's going to be a lot better. There you go. Now you can see all four corners. I've got green paint all over my gloves from all picking that up because it's not dry. I think I have a dry painting. Dry painting sitting there when it's still wet. some of that off my hands. Okay. I'm going to go with the aqua. 
these. And the pink, or the magenta, as it's called. Oh, got some foam. That might be my son's results. Okay. Give me one second. Give me one second, I'm going to respond to this. Yes, Connie, I watch Molly's artistry all the time. Hi, Molly. Fond of pet here. Fond of pet creations. How are you, Annie? Period. I'm in the middle of videotaping, so I had to give her a shout out on my tape. Love you, sis. Bye. Okay. My sister's giving me artist, um, yeah, uh, suggestions, and I've already, I already know them, so. <laughs> okay, here's the light blue. This corner a little further back, so I'm going to bring that light blue up a little more. Ah! Same with this one. Got this one way forward. <laughs> that one way forward. Doesn't really matter because it's all going to get blown around and make beautifulness anyway. And white. Just going to do a little bit of that right in the middle of each of these. Okay, now we're going to go back and we're going to do blue. I wasn't sure I'd have enough to do this all the way around, but I'm going to do the sides here. Well, maybe I will have enough. There she is again. She always has to have the last word. <laughs> Just joking, Connie. That's the blue. The pink. The dark green. Except for the white. I have lots of pink left if I want to add that. I wanted to save just a little bit because I wanted to make sure I had enough for everything. Ah, too much white, too much white. Maybe not. Okay. Now for the air gun. Or whatever we call it. Okay. She said awesome. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm going to start spraying this around. Which sides with it? Okay, I'm going to stand up so I can get around the other side. 
going to um, put some of this white. Actually, no, I'm going to use the pink. We'll go around all the way around this again. Fill these corners in, and then I'll blow it again. Okay, and I think we have enough light on there. I'm trying to concentrate on what I want it to do. garbage so I don't leak it all over my floor. Get rid of the paper towel. Still want it to be white but I mean wet but and the green paint's fine. I'm just gonna go around this again to a certain point. Okay, well, I literally screwed that up, didn't I? That's okay, because I need to take 
take a section of this off this paint which I'm going to just put on this corners and I will fix them later Okay, now rip that off. Now that I've succeeded in making purple, and I'm going to scrape this section here to get all that, just that part off. Okay, now I'm going to put some more blue in the center, since it's dry. And um, I'm just going to do it with my fingers. Okay, and I'm going to let that dry overnight. Actually, I need to put some more turquoise on there. Do I have any left? Which one did I use? I used this one. Okay, I need to have some wet paint to draw some of the other paint out onto. So we're going to do this. Ah, I just stuck my arm in that paint. Paper towel, paintbrush. Shh, I'm batting a thousand tonight. Oh my gosh, you guys, you gotta just turn me off now. Get it over with. Basically going back to the beginning of the video because I messed this up so bad. Sorry, I had my air pressure up way too high. But it's okay, it's not done yet and it will be beautiful when it is. Paper towel. 
I'm going to have a full roll down here. I'm using enough of them tonight. There. Now I'm going to let it dry overnight. <laughs> After I do this next step. <laughs> I know y'all think I'm crazy. I am. I've been wanting to do this painting all week. I've been saving this canvas and now for some reason none of it is working out the way I thought it should. Okay now what I'm going to do is take my little piece of bamboo and I'm going to Bring some of this up through here like this. For some reason I'm not picking the paint up, I'm just moving the Turquoise around. So I need to wipe it in between each one. I hope that you're getting to see the fantasy of this a little bit by now.
There. Now I'm letting it dry overnight. So I'm going to run this stick around the sides to rub whatever paint there is on there around on the teal. Okay, I will see you tomorrow. Good night.